What happens when the toughest white man on the planet stares down a squad of kickboxers out for chaos in his pub? Imagine the tension, the air crackling with potential violence, and a man who doesn't just stand his ground, he backs it up with action. Meet Big Joe Egan, Mike Tyson's former sparring partner, retired from the ring and stepping into a new arena where the fights are real and the stakes are personal. This isn't just a story about pub security, it's a tale of honour, grit and the heart of a fighter. The 1990s, Birmingham's nights are unforgiving, the patrons even more so. Bringing Joe Egan to manage your pub wasn't just smart, it was a statement. Against bullies, he wasn't just a landlord, he was an equaliser. His record, more than just numbers on a page. Over 80 wins, seven Irish titles, and rounds with boxing legends. But tonight we focus on a fight that never made the record books. Yet it's etched in the minds of those who witnessed it. The night Joe knocked out four kickboxers. So I'm in Birmingham. I've done my MVQs. I've done my B11 certificate. I'm the licensee of the pub. A very, very successful pub. I'm in a position of trust with my friend. It was great. Anyway, one particular Sunday afternoon, like any normal pub, it's very busy. It's got two big video screens, one each end of the pub. There's a match on, Gaelic match or whatever, Irish football match. So the pub's packed and it's buzzing. It's got a lot of trade passing through from the coach station. This group of about 15 guys are coming. They turned out to be a Midlands kickboxing team that had been on tour up and down the country and they come back to Birmingham. So they come into the pub and they're on a high from their kickboxing matches. Anyway, they spread out around the pub because there wasn't much room for 15 of them to stand in one group. Four were stood at the bar and they were being a little bit boisterous because they were getting the drink quicker than the rest of them because they were standing at the bar. So they were downing it pretty quick. And the more they downed, the more boisterous they got. So I'm watching, I thought to myself, this is all I need. There's at least 15 of them, trained fighters, kickboxers. Paddy Finn's out somewhere having a meal or whatever. I thought, I don't need this. I've just landed on my feet again. MVQs, my licence, everything's going well. So I thought, I don't need them to start a row, doing their kung fu kickboxing moves. So I walk over and I said to the one guy standing there with his muscles and his big neck and all, this is a lover's pub, not a fighter's pub. Calm down, lads. He gave me a sort of look of contempt, but he said nothing. So I sat more or less opposite them, rather than walk away. I sat opposite them, not staring at them, but close enough. If they started messing about again, I could get at them quick. At that stage, two girls who'd come off another coach came into the pub. Tina Brennan and her friend just come back from Blackpool or Brighton. Hey, Joe, they said, and they sat down beside me. I thought, I don't need this. I'm trying to watch these four, and the two girls are trying to chat to me. The two girls are attractive girls, and at that moment, one of the four guys from the bar comes over and he says, Move up there, let me sit in beside you. I said, no, you stay in your own company. And he just looked at me, the same contempt as earlier. He said, I'm going to blow you away. Now, I didn't come over from Ireland to be listening to this from some upstart. I thought to myself, no, I'm not having this. So I stood up and I put my arm around him. You're leaving now. I don't have to listen to this. You're leaving. And as I put an arm around him to usher him out, he's done some sort of kung fu move turned and blocked my hand. So as he's done that, I come up with the uppercut. It was a peach. Bang! Out for the count. His three friends at the bar. Four punches. Four knockouts. Bang! 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 And the four of them hit the deck. And I look up, because don't forget, there's at least another ten of his friends in. So I look at them, and they're looking at me. I didn't push the issue. I didn't attack them. A couple of bar staff helped me carry the unconscious lads outside. And it's like a Clint Eastwood movie. They're lined up outside. Nearly, Sean Jr. and Emmett were at the bar. And he said, we've never seen anything like it, Joe. I said, ah, it's nothing. Jesus, Joe, what? No, don't be talking about that. I want to talk about boxing. That's not my scene, street fighting. Paddy Finn came back and I explained to him. He was laughing. He said, well, you weren't the heavyweight champion for nothing. He's just a great character. For days, it was all the talk. You want to see Joe Egan's punch? I said, don't be saying them things. I'm not over here to street fan. My boxing career's finished. How glorious short-lived. Always in my whole life when I've been in situations like the gun battle, which I'll tell about later, and other times when people have tried to stab me 
or have been attacked with different weapons. I've always maintained over my career, somebody watches over me. I believe in my heart and soul. I know my grandparents, my mum's parents, my dad's parents, or somebody I've befriended over the years. I believe they watch over me. They're my guardian angels. Somebody watches over me from heaven. So that was Big Joe Egan making quick work of four kickboxers in the Dubliner, which I think was Digbeth area and it would have been around 1995. Joe at that point was helping out a pal of his to run this pub and learn the trade okay but after that he went on to a pub called the Lindhurst on the Lindhurst estate quite a rough estate I'm told in I think it's Erdington this was later and there was a real nasty incident there involving two old shooters everything else and it kicked off real bad with some local gangs and Joe was in the thick of it. Um, I've done a video on that already. So if you haven't seen that, that is linked to this video. And I'll stick a link in the comments for it as well. Because that's a real interesting turnout that happened. Just to finish up, there's been loads of videos in the past about Joe and the potential fight with John Fury, which it doesn't look like it's happening now. For my money... If I had to pick, I've been asked by loads of people, so I thought I'd address it. If I had to pick, I'd have Joe winning that by stoppage. Although, I wouldn't like to see anyone, what are they, late 50s, fighting at that age, especially on a big um, on a big card or anything like that. I mean, I'm 45, and um, I wouldn't want to be getting into the ring now, or scrapping on the streets and whatnot. Really, you know, you've had your time, haven't you? Not saying that we can't do it still to a certain degree but you're not in your prime and there's better things to be doing i mean if they're getting paid a massive a truckload of money yeah 100 percent. i'd get in and do it and i wouldn't blame those two i think joe's in good shape i think john's in good shape i know john fury gets a load of stick um people <laughs> people troll him which you can i understand because of the way he acts and he says a lot of foolish stuff and he plays up like he's like the pantomime villain, um, I guess. I've done a video on John Fury as well, um, which you can find on the playlist somewhere. But what I would say for John Fury to stick up for him, slightly, not that I particularly like the type of character he is, most of the comments I've seen in some of my videos, proper slagging him because he got knocked out, out a couple of times when he was boxing professionally. Well, let's be honest. Most of these people who are really slagging him and saying he can't fight and he got knocked out easy, they're not fighters. He's a pro fighter. And he stepped in the ring and he's done his training. And he was actually working the shovel and whatnot at the time. You know, he was holding down a full-time job whilst training for these fights. And he was half decent, you know. And for anyone to get in the ring, whether it be amateur or um, even white collar, whatever it may be, let alone professional, I've got the utmost respect for. And none of these people trolling him would say it to his face, I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> but that being said, he's not my cup of tea. I was a big fan of Tyson Fury, and I followed Tyson into Germany, uh, Las Vegas for the second fight against Wilder with the lads. That was a great, crazy weekend. I might tell a story of it one day. Uh, but I've gone off Tyson a bit, if I'm honest, as well, because he contradicts himself that many times. And I don't know, I, it's just something which has put me off a little bit because I used to be a, a big supporter of him. I still think he's a super talented fighter. I think that he should be too big for um, Usyk. But it's going to be a tough fight. And he does have problems sometimes with smaller fighters, so you never know. But, um, yeah, I just thought I'd give my two penny worth on that. Big respect to Joe Egan. A lot of my friends are pals with him. I don't know him myself personally. I've met him a couple of times. But he's always seemed a very decent chap. And um, my good friend, Matt Legg, he has gone and done a few debt collecting jobs, I think, in the past with Joe. But I won't tell that story. I'll let him say that himself. Um, and he likes Joe, thinks Joe's a good good guy as well. So that's enough for me. All right, take care, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll 